Hi guys, it's Ashraf from WizEdu, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to apply to the University of Cape Town. So I have my browser window open here. I'm using Google Chrome, and I'm going to go to my URL and punch in applyonline.uct.ac.ca. And this takes me to my application portal, which I can use to apply. Now, the first option I have to select is which year I'm applying for. And obviously, since you would be in matric this year, that would be 2020, you'd want to apply to be a student in 2021. So I'm going to click to continue. And my next option is, am I a first time visitor to the UCT website? Well, obviously I'm already a student at UCT. So ideally I would want to say no, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to say yes. So I can show you the whole application process. So what I'm going to do here is just put in this name here so UCT doesn't pick up that I'm already a student. Um, I'm going to put some dates in 2000. Let's make that 23rd of April 2000. And I'm going to go ahead and enter my email address here. Just going to quickly copy and paste that. And I'll create a password here. And we'll click to create an account. And this account is basically going to be your gateway to your UCT online application, which you will use to manage any communications between yourself and the university and check the status of your application and upload any documents where the need may arise. So we'll click to create an account. I will update my password and I will return to the UCT website. Okay, now what this means is I will basically be sent um, an email at this email where I can confirm my account. And when I receive that email, I will then be able to continue with my application. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to access my email so that I can log in and continue with my application. So I'm going to go to my Outlook account. I'm going to go to sign in. Um, Google has already inputted my details for me so I can sign in. And now when I get to my inbox, I see that I have no mail. However, I do have one email in junk mail. So apparently Outlook has classified um, my application as being junk mail. So I'm going to go check my email, click to verify my email address, and this will allow me to continue with my application. So I'll go down. It says here that my email has been verified. So I'm still applying for the year 2021. I will click to continue. And now it's already filled in that are you a first time visitor to the UCT online application website? No, because I've already done this first step here. We've already created our account. So we will go to no and we will put in our details. Passwords already filled in for us thanks to Google, and we will click sign in. So, our first step is going to be to fill in our personal details. That's what it says here. So, we will go to the personal details tab. Have I ever applied to UCT before? Obviously, if I was in matric, I would say no. Have I ever registered at UCT before? No. If you are in matric, that's what you'd say. Have you ever been registered at another tertiary institution? No, because you're still in matric. Are you writing a secondary school leaving examination in 2020? Well, yes, you are. You would either be writing the IEB or NSC exam at the end of this year. Have you written a secondary school leaving examination previously? Well, obviously, if you haven't uh, failed previously, or if this is your first time in matric, then you would say you haven't written a school exam leaving examination previously because this is your first time in matric. So my first name as per my ideal passport is going to be Dr. Musa. Um, I'm just using that for this example here. And we're going to go ahead and put the same data for that I put before. Um, doesn't really matter. This is just for practice. My title would be Mr. All of these bits here aren't information that's required for you to fill in. Anything with an asterisk, as you can see over here, is something you are required to fill in. However, all this information, such as middle name, the first, third, uh, first name, you can leave that out. Um, sex, male. My home language would be English. And am I a South African citizen? Yes, I am. Um, my SAID number. So for my identity number, I'm just going to continue with that date of birth I've given so it matches up. So I'm just going to put in this ID number. It isn't real, but for the sake of the video, that's what I'm going to use. 
um, obviously you would put in your real ID number. Do I need assistance because of a disability, physical or otherwise? I'm fortunate enough not to be disabled, so I would click no. However, if this is applicable to you, you would click yes, and you would get a list of disabilities you would be able to choose from um, in this table, but I'm going to say no. Are you applying for a semester study abroad program at UCT? I'm going to keep that as no, and I'm not going to select yes, because I'm applying for a full degree. If you're in matric and you're applying for a full degree, a full-time degree at the University of Cape Town, you'd keep that as no, and now you'll be asked to um, upload proof of your identity document. So I'm going to say I'm going to be uploading my essay identity document. I'm going to click Add Attachment, Choose File. In my Downloads folder over here, I have a certified copy of my ID. Um, I don't think your ID needs to be a certified copy, but the copy I have here is a certified copy. And then I'm going to choose that and click Upload. So now it's uploading and we're waiting and it's uploaded. So now we can go to our next step. And I'm just going to save the application here. And that means we've successfully um, completed this section. And as you can see, a whole lot of other um, uh, tabs have opened up for us to complete. And if, for example, you didn't fill in all the information here, you could click this button here, which would identify any missing information. So anything you've left out of your application that's important, that's required, you can just click that button there. So we're going to go to the next tab here. We've completed personal details. We'll go to program of study. So this will allow us to choose what we want to study at the University of Cape Town. So do you have a diploma or university degree or will you graduate by the end of 2020? And no, because I'm still in high school. I don't have a degree. I don't have a diploma. So I'm going to select no. And now we placed with two options. So at the University of Cape Town, you're allowed to apply for two different things. You have two options. So for example, if you weren't accepted for your um, preferred choice, you might be accepted for another choice. So you're allowed to keep your options open. And this is especially good for people who still aren't decided on what they want to study. For example, in matric, I was debating between medicine and actuarial science. My first choice was with the Faculty of Commerce. And here we just given a message. Uh, we are told that if you apply to the Faculty of Commerce, once you register, you can change your degree to anything within the Faculty of Science. That means that if I apply, to, let's say, for actuarial science, and in 2021, when I go to register at the University of Cape Town, I could always change to a BCom in accounting, for example. And what this is also basically telling me that if I apply for an actuarial science, if I don't qualify or I don't meet the requirements of that course, I will be considered for other degrees within the Faculty of Commerce, such as a BCom. Okay. And this is basically a message on the flexibility of commerce degrees. So I'll just click OK there and I can click the qualification I want. I'm going to go for Bachelor of Commerce or Bachelor of Business Science in Actuarial Science Mainstream. Your ADP, on the other hand, would be your Academic Development Program. That would be an extended course, an additional one year. If you would like additional support or if you were a bit disadvantaged during your schooling career and you need a bit more support to excel at university, that's what you'd want to be going for. I'm going to go for Mainstream. And for my second choice, when I was in matric, I applied to the Faculty of Health Sciences. I applied for a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. So that's what I'm going to uh, click now. And here's a message just saying that it's a requirement that my NBT must be written before the 31st of August of this year. So that's just to remind me that they need those results in early, earlier than other programs. So I'm just going to click OK there. Uh, do I want to upload evidence of my prof proficiency in English? Obviously, since I'm a home language English speaker, I don't need to do that. So I would click no. English has been my own home language. And based on my marks in school, it can be assumed that I am relatively proficient in English. However, if this was applicable to you, you could click yes. I would like to upload some evidence of my proficiency in English. Um, I could add a row over here and upload a file um, that would uh, show that I was proficient in English, but I'm just, for the purposes of this, going to click no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click save to save my application. And you can see there's a tick over here. Um, I've basically ticked off what I want to study so I can move on to the next tab, which is to fill in my contact details. Now my contact details, the country I reside in, 
is South Africa. So I'm just going to find that on the list. Here's South Africa. So for my postal code, I'll just go and put my Cape Town address in, which is 7925. Um, we'll go and look that up. And that comes as observatory. I'm going to click that one there. Um, so my first address or my suburb rather, that's also required, but you can see there's an asterisk there. I'm just going to click observatory. Okay. For my first line address, I'm going to put in apartment one, two, three. Um, the Eden. Obviously, that's a fake apartment number. I don't want to give you guys my real apartment number. And I'm going to say that's going to be 14 Phil Road, right? So my now I can go on to fill in my um, phone numbers. But first, I have this option here. Is your postal address different from your home address? Um, I could say no. But if your postal address was different from your home address, you'd click yes. And since mine is, I would click yes because I received my post in KZN. So I'd go down, find South Africa, put in a postal code, 3306. Look that up. That would come up as High Flats. I'm going to put in search for High Flats here, and that's what I get. And that's going to be PO Box 1, High Flats 3306. Now I can go in and fill in my contact details. So your international dialing code for South Africa is plus 27, but UCT likes to just keep it as 27. They don't have a plus, as you can see by the example given here. So I'm just going to put in a random 10 digits, 072. Okay, so I'm just putting in a random phone number there. Um, it's not a requirement to put in a fax address. Obviously, not many people have fax addresses. And we can put in our cell phone number as well. So always remember the dialing code. And that's going to be 082 and just a random number for this application. Now I'll go ahead and click save. And you can see we've completed all the required information here. So this tab has been completed. We can move on to the next step. So our next step, are you writing a secondary school leaving examination in 2020? In our previous steps, we've already selected yes to this. So that's already filled in for us. Is your grade 12 or equivalent school in South Africa? Obviously, if you are a South African student, you are going to click yes here. Now I can find my school. Now I can find my school by clicking province. So I'm going to narrow that down to KZN. I'll search my school here. I'm just going to put in the first few letters there for my school. And we have Scopra High School. So I'll select that. Just check these details are correct. Have I written a secondary school leaving examination previously? I've already answered this question before, so it's filled in for me. That's going to be no. Select your school leaving exam authority. Obviously, if you are within a public school such as mine, you would um, click NSC. Or even if you were uh, with a private school that writes the IEB, you'd click NSC for National Senior Certificate. Um, however, if you were doing a different qualification, you'd select something else. Indicate whether your school has three or four terms. My school had four terms, so that's what I'll select here. Did I write my grade 11 exam at the same school as I'm writing it in grade 12? So I was in Scopra High School since grade eight and up until grade 12, so I'm going to click yes. I have been at Scopra High for that period, so yes. However, if you click no, um, you'd be faced with another few options. Is your grade 11 school in South Africa? You might say yes, and then you'd have to click, um, you'd have to show which school you're in in grade 11. But for the purposes of this application, I'm going to click yes over here. Now my NBT registration number, uh, you would have had to um, register to write your NBTs. However, as you can see, this isn't a required field at the moment and you could come back and fill it in later. So I'm going to go and fill in my marks for each of my subjects. English was 95, Afrikaans 94, Mathematics was 100, Life Orientation 94, Accounting 98, Physics 98, Life Sciences was 94, History 96, and AP Maths was 94. Okay, so I've filled in my marks for grade 11. I'm just going to go ahead and click Save. Okay, and obviously you can also enter your grade 12 subjects in. Those are going to be the same as your grade 11 subjects. And you can see that it only has a tab open for April because obviously um, you wouldn't have gone further than April this year. But of course, many of us, due to the current COVID-19 outbreak, we have not had the privilege of writing our exams as yet. 
So many of us might not even have our April results as yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in um, just so it's uh, completed. And we have AP maths here. So these are my subjects for grade 12, but I'm just going to leave the April percentages blank because I'm sure for most of you, you wouldn't have gotten your April results back yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and click save. And my save is successful. And I don't have a tick here yet because I haven't filled in my NBT registration number. And obviously my grade 12 marks aren't filled in, but these aren't required fields. So you can still submit your application without having filled in your April percentages. Obviously I would highly recommend registering for your NBT as soon as possible. So I'm going to go to the next tab, which is already completed, post-school activities. Of course, since you're still in matric, you haven't done anything outside of school or post-school, so that's done. Tertiary education details, I don't need to complete as stated here because I'm still in high school. I, haven't, I don't have a tertiary education background. Now we'll go to housing application. Do you want to be considered for student housing in 2021? Obviously, if you live in Cape Town or you are opting for private accommodation, you click no. However, if you wanted to keep your options open, I would recommend clicking yes, because even if you are accepted for student housing, it's not something you have to go into. So it's always good to keep your options open. So I'm just going to click yes there and save. So you can see we have a tick now for our housing application. Now we come to funding. Do I need financial assistance for my undergraduate study? Um, if you needed financial assistance, you'd click yes. Otherwise, you'd click no. So if you clicked yes, you'd be provided with this information here, and you'd have to apply for financial assistance through NASFIS, as it says here, and they, in conjunction with the university, would arrange your how you'd be financially supported. But for the purposes of this application, I will click no, and then I will click save. Okay, and you can see we have a tick here for our funding, and we will go on to the final step, which is our parent and guardian information and the people who will be responsible for our fees. So I'm going to go in and fill in my dad's information here as my parent. I'm going to fill that in. And you don't have to fill in your, his ID or passport number. As you can see, there's no asterisk here, but I would recommend doing that. But just for the interest of privacy and this video, I'm going to leave that blank. I'm going to put the relationship and my father. Email address. I, You'd obviously put in his email address. As you can see, it's not a requirement, but I'm just going to put in my personal email address here. So I'd be informed of any communications. And then I fill in a cell phone number. As you can see, it's not a requirement. There's no asterisk, but I will just put in a fake phone number just for interest of the video. And is your parent guardian's address different from your home address? So obviously, if you are staying with your father or your parent or guardian, you'd say no. However, if you were staying separately from your parent or guardian, you would click yes, and then you'd be provided with this um, tab here so you could input their address. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to say no. Um, and now we go on to our fee payer information. Who's going to be responsible for fees? Is your parent or guardian also your fee payer? Well, if, you're, if the details of the person you full, filled in here was responsible for your fees, you'd go ahead and click yes, and that would automatically fill in their details here as your fee payer. However, if someone else was responsible for your fees, or you had a sponsor, or your aunt or grandparents were going to be paying your fees, then you click no, and you'd have to supply their details in this box here. But for this video, I'm going to click yes. Is the postal address of your fee payer different from your postal address? So obviously, if you're staying at different locations, you receive posts differently, or um, your fee payer isn't a family member or is a different family member than you've indicated over here, you might, they might receive their post at a different address. You'd click yes, and then you could fill in their information here. However, if they were staying in the same address as you, in this case, my father, he receives the post in the same post box as me, I would click no and my postal address would automatically be filled in here. Um, however, you would have to change that if the postal address was different, but I'm going to leave it no for now. And now our final step is our redress and disadvantage factor information. And this allows the university to assess what your circumstances and background are so they can adequately um, implement transformation and redress in the university. So 
what was your mother's racial, racial classification under apartheid? I'm going to say Indian. For my dad, that would be the same. My mom's first language was English. Um, and then for my mom, her highest level of education was a diploma. So that's what I'll select. Obviously, you are given quite a few options here. My dad, his highest level of education was matric. And my grandparents was some formal schooling. So um, just high school. So that's what I'll fill in. Sorry, high school, some formal schooling. Um, does your family receive a child support grant on your behalf? So do my parents get a child support grant for myself? I'm going to say no. Um, does my family rely on a social pension from the state or government? I will click no. And I filled in this tab. So now I will go ahead and click save. Okay. So now, as you can see, most of my details are completed. If you've reached the step and you still don't have some ticks, you can click this button here, which will identify any missing information. So it's taking me back to this tab here on secondary school details. And as you can see, um, I clicked no, or I left that as no by mistake. Did you write your grade 11 exam at the same school as grade 12? Um, I forgot to keep that back to yes. And I had this little bit open here. So I will go ahead and click yes there and save. And now you can see um, our application is done. So any other missing information, our MBT registration number. I haven't put in my MBT registration number, but I'm just going to copy and paste my number from when I was in the trick. And I'm going to click save. And as you can see, we now have a tick here for all our tabs. Okay, so if you identify any missing information, nothing is going to come up. There is no missing information. I can go to step 10 and submit my application. So now you can see this tab, which wasn't there previously, has now opened up for us. And we can go here to submit our application. So if you're happy with your application, especially in terms of your faculty and option choices, you can click yes, submit, and that would submit your application. However, if you still were deliberating on your choices, you still hadn't registered for your NBT and hadn't inputted that details, you wouldn't complete this step. You'd click no, don't submit. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to click no, don't submit because I don't want to add an additional fake application to UCT's pool, um, which would make it a bit difficult for them to discern which applications are real or not. So I'm going to click no, do not submit. But obviously you guys would click um, submit if you were happy with the information you filled in. If you clicked no, don't submit, and you still had some information that was outstanding, you'd come back here and you'd click this button here, which would be save and exit. And that would allow all the information you filled in to be saved and will, would allow you to come back at a later date to fill in that application by logging in with your email and password. So that's what I'll do for now, save and exit. So now I can sign out and I'm taken back to the login page. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this explains how to complete an online application for the University of Cape Town. Thanks for watching.